Hi everyone, welcome to today's walkthrough of Lee code number 823, binary trees and factors. Let's get into it. So in this problem, we're given an array and it's all, all its elements are unique and greater than one. We're also told that we can create binary trees using elements inside this array, where each non-leaf node value is equal to the product of the values of its children. Each element can be used multiple times in each tree and finally, we're told to return the number of all possible trees subject to these constraints. So firstly, let's make a note of what we shouldn't do. We'll call this an almost idea. You might think this is boring, but understanding why ideas don't work is just as valuable as looking at the solution that does work. So all this talk we've had about finding factors that make up a number might make you tempted to think, well, perhaps for each number, I should generate all factors of that number and then multiply all those factors by each other. Like for example, two times eight is equal to 16 and four times eight is equal to 32. And then maybe we can multiply all of those products by each other again, and then do something with the result where we sum all the possible products together. That's too much. So there are a couple of hints that you shouldn't go down this path. This is a medium problem, and these numbers can be anywhere from two to a billion. Finding all the factors of a billion is going to take a long time, especially if the other 999 numbers in the array are also larger than 999 million. This is a time intensive task, as well as an implementation heavy approach, and typically medium leak code questions aren't going to ask you to do that. There's another good reason this isn't the best idea. We're only allowed to use elements in the array to build our tree. So even if we did pull together all the factors of a very large number, we can only use up to a thousand of those to build our tree. So instead of searching for all factors to iterate over, it's much simpler to just iterate over our 1000 element array and see how many of them evenly divide the current element. That way, our search for factors has a pretty low upper bound. So what I'm trying to get out with this whole discussion is that I don't want this video to just be a video about leak code 823. There's a larger point to be made here. There's ingenuity in that approach and engineering skill too. But when you do these questions, you can't lose sight of the original problem statement. Our task at hand is to return the number of all possibilities of trees we can have. The approach I described earlier is one that generates all possible roots of the subtrees. Although we can obviously just take the count of subtrees we generate, the fact that we're asked to take the number modulo 1 billion and 7 suggests that the problem space is at least on the order of billions, and you'll probably run out of memory or time if you choose this approach. Don't over-engineer your solution. Just solve the question that you're actually being asked. Okay, so how do we do this problem? Well, problems involving trees typically have a nice recurrence relation, so let's see if we can pull that off. Imagine we're looking at the top three nodes in our tree, and we don't even care about what their values are. Let's say we know that the left child has 10 possible trees to create when x is the root, and the right child has 5 possible trees to create when y is the root. Can you then say with certainty how many trees can be created when z is the root? Well, almost. z may have 100 more numbers that evenly divide it, and x and y are just two of those, but we can deduce how many trees are rooted at z, assuming that z's children are x and y. How many are there? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in three, two, one. The answer is 50. For every possible tree that is rooted at X, there are five trees we can shuffle through that are rooted at Y. So for every pair of factors X, Y of Z, we take the possibilities of trees rooted at X, multiplied by the number of possibilities of trees rooted at Y, and then take the sum over all possible factors of Z. So now we have the foundation to start sketching our solution. We'll say that for each factor that evenly divides z, we'll add the number of possibilities rooted at z factor and then multiply it by z divided by factor. And this works. But now let's expand our scope a little bit. z might not be at the top of the tree, in which case we might want to continue building on what we have so far. So instead of storing our account in total, let's store these numbers in a dictionary where the keys represent the roots of each subtree and the values represent the number of possible trees we can generate using that value as the root. That way we can reuse our result for this node as we move through the tree. Let's also perform this operation for all possible values 
by iterating through our array. Okay, now this will only work assuming that the number of possibilities for x and y have already been populated by the time we're evaluating the possibilities for z. How do we ensure that that happens? Well, recall from the problem description that all numbers are greater than 1 and unique. This means that the value of the tree nodes will only get larger as you move up the tree since we're never going to be multiplying by 1. So then, given that information, can you think of a way that we can iteratively populate this dictionary so that x and y are guaranteed to be populated with the correct value before we evaluate z? Think about it and pause the video. I'll reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1. The answer is that we should just sort our array and then iterate through the sorted order to populate our dictionary. So let's do that. We'll sort the input array first and then iterate. For each element in the sorted array, we'll iterate over the factors for that element. If we find both the factor and its complement in the map, then we add the result of multiplying them together to our result. Finally, we'll take the sum over all of the map values modulo 1 billion and 7. Remember, this dictionary represents the number of possibilities for each subtree. So the total number of trees will just be the total if we considered each subtree to be its own tree. Okay, so up until now, I have neglected to explain how we're going to gather all the factors for each element. This is not a trivial task to do efficiently. How might we do it? Well, we alluded to it earlier in the first faulty approach. Since the length of the list is only 1000, we can just iterate through all numbers in the array and see whether they evenly divide the current element. So let's do that. We'll just iterate through our array and we consider a number to be a factor when it evenly divides z. We can also just break the loop when factor is equal to z because we know that there will be no more numbers that evenly divide z once we reach numbers that are larger than z. Okay, so we just need to make a few tweaks when doing this in actual code. We'll initialize our dictionary with default values of 1 to start with because every value has at least one subtree of size 1, where the value is the only node in the tree. The second point I want to mention is that if you're doing this in C++ or Java, you probably need to move this modulo operation to every single multiplication in line 10 because Python has a better way of representing larger integers. Okay, so that's how you do this problem in just 11 lines of code and beat 89% of users. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next video.